everybody. I hope you're doing well today. Um, I've had a request to revisit one of my older banjo lessons from 2013, and that's the very first Easy Claw Hammer Banjo Lesson 1, okay? So, I'm going to do that. It's 2019 now, and it's time for it. So, I want to welcome you to Banjo Lemonade. I hope you will enjoy the channel. I've got a whole bunch of videos, over 300 out there. Um, and they're, most of them are in playlists if you look on my channel. So, um, let's get into this. We're going to need to be in standard G tuning. Um, first of all, good on you. Here's your pat on the back for buying a banjo. Yes! Awesome! Uh, we're going to get in standard G tuning here. Uh, so that's the fifth string, this top string, in G. Sounds like this. Now the fourth string needs to be in D. Third string G, second string B, and the first string D. Beautiful sound. Okay, now you've chosen and clicked on this video because you want to learn something about the old time style of banjo plan, and that's referred to as claw hammer, frailing, old time. Um, some people get into little arguments over it, but basically they're all the same, similar. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get our hand in the shape of a claw. Did you hear that? Claw? Claw? Hammer? So if we get our shape, hand in the shape of a claw, just pretend like you're grabbing a flashlight or something and pointing it. Okay? There you go. That's your shape. Now, we strike the strings in a downward motion with this claw and we hammer. When you hammer, what do you do? Well, you move your hand up and down and you move your wrist too. Okay? There you go. Claw hammer. Alright? So we're going to put our flashlight hold onto the banjo head. Okay? This white part on mine may be a different material on yours, but we're going to get our hand down there onto that in our claw shape. Right? See that? Alright, now we're going to put our thumb into our home position here, and that is resting on that top fifth string and touching the head of the banjo, okay? And we're just going to go up and down. Now, we're not doing this parallel movement here. We're not, we're not doing this straight up and down movement, okay? We're kind of doing an out and down, okay? Out and in. Out to in up to down. Alright? Now, just start doing this and try to think about putting that thumb into that fifth string. Alright? And resting it there. Okay? Now, there's three steps to this stroke. Okay? So, the first step, I'm going to exaggerate my hand movements. When you're actually doing it, it's a smaller movement, but when you start, it needs to be bigger. Okay? So, I'm going to go up and out. And when I go down, I'm going to strike down into that first string at the bottom. Okay? Now, I use my middle finger. You can use your index or your middle. doesn't matter. But I use my middle. So when I do that, up and out and down, notice what happens to my thumb. My thumb... comes right back down to that home home position okay so that is the first step of the stroke All right do that a little bit look down at your banjo and do it okay now the second part is what we call a brush okay so for that we need to come back up we've we've come down and hit that first string and our thumb is resting there. It, it might look more hooked like this. Might be flattened out wonky like mine. Either way is fine. Okay. So now the second part is after we've done that, we come back up and we're going to go down again. But this time we're going to hit the third, second, and first string all at the same time and we're going to call it a brush. So down, up, Again, where does my thumb go? It goes straight back there, okay? So, 
down, up, down. Okay, down, up, down. Now, we want to aim to hit all three of these all at once. Now, let me show you what a brush is not. That is not a brush. Uh, let's call that a rake. You're raking your fingers slowly across and you hear all three notes there. We don't want that. We want to all at the same time. Okay? So, there's the first step. Lift it up. Second step. Okay. Now, for the third step of the claw hammer stroke, we're just going to use our thumb. All right? So, our thumb is already where? It's already right here. Okay? All we do is go like this and bring it out. Out and up. Everything's out and up a little bit. Okay? Just like that. So try that for a second. Okay? So now we put them all together. One. Up and out. Two. Three. Okay? Now. That is the gist of it. But our timing is important too. So when we're counting, um, we're counting to four when we're playing a four, four song. So we're going one, two, three, four. The space in between the one and the two, the two and the three, three and the four is all the same. One, two, three, four. Now, we're gonna put something that we'll call an and in the middle of the two and the three, okay? We're gonna put an and there, and it's gonna fit right in the middle. So it'll be one, two, and. Now do you see how it went in the middle? So it's faster than the three. It's between the two and the three. One, two, and, okay? Now, that gets us our three steps of the claw hammer stroke. Isn't that neat the way that works out? One, two, and. Three, four, and. And then we're back to one. One, two, and. Now, how does that work on the banjo? It works like this. One, two, and. Okay? And remember, when we're doing that thumb, it's just coming off. It's not any kind of a big thumb movement. It's nothing like, like that or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a little pop-off. We don't want it to be this big thumb movement. That's going to mess us up later when we get fast, okay? So we want it to be this relaxed movement, okay? So here's that one, two, and on the banjo. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying this is weird. This is the weirdest thing I've done on a stringed instrument. Yes, it feels weird, but if you practice it, you'll get it, okay? So just get into it. Now, if you don't want to annoy your family, get yourself a rag and shove it in behind your bridge here, and it'll quiet it down, okay? Uh, you can take the rag and bundle it up real thick to where it you kind of have to mash it to get it in there. And if you do that, it'll get even quieter. It'll get even quieter, okay? Now another thing you can do is, you can take that fretting hand and mute the string. Now, you can hear all three of your steps here. We just don't want that rake to be this. That's not right, okay? Want to be. I like to call it and refer to it sometimes as just throwing my hand at the banjo, okay? Because that's, it's just a relaxed movement. Now it is controlled somewhat, but get used to that first string. going to use that third finger some people will to get it out of the way they'll just shoot it straight down and that's fine or you can tuck it under 
I just sort of mine just does whatever it wants. Okay, it doesn't get in the way. It's gonna take you a while to get comfortable with this, and there's nothing you can do about it other than to just practice this. Okay, just practice it. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Now, if your other fingers are hitting on the brush. like a brush and not a rake and we want to try to only hit the bottom three strings instead of all four okay we want to try to hit and sometimes you'll hit two sometimes you'll hit four but we want to try to hit three Keep that thumb going home. Now, when we've done that, until we're way, way, way beyond sick of it, then we move up to our second string. And when we do that, something's going to change. What's going to change is the size of your open claw here. It's going to get a little smaller. Another thing that's going to change is your your finger that is striking down on the string is not going to hit the head of the banjo, the drum. It's going to go down that far. It's going to rest. It's going to stop and rest on the first string. If it goes all the way down, you're going to have to control that. You need it to stop right there. Okay, and stop into that first string. Okay, same thing when we move up to the third string. Our claw is going to get a little smaller, and our striking finger is going to rest on the second string now. Okay, same thing with the fourth string. that the third and the fourth string are much harder than the first and the second string because you're training yourself to close that gap a little bit more, okay? All right, so get used to all those strings. We're going to stop right there and take your time with this, okay? No need to rush through this. part right and really listen for those one, two, and, and it may help you to even say that. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Just make sure you're not going one, two, and. Make sure you're not using that space. One, two, and three, four, and. That's wrong, okay? Remember, it's got to fit in between the two and the three. It's got to fit in between there. So it can't be one, two, and. That's wrong. It's got to be one, two, and. One, two, and three. Okay, so if we went one, two, three, it's got to fit between one, two, and three, four, and. Okay? It's got to fit in there. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that you, I hope you're as excited as me about your beginning banjo journey here um, you're gonna have a blast I tell you there's so much diversity to be found in this style of play it's amazing and I want you to also watch other people play you know don't just watch me of course um, don't just watch me watch all kind of players play uh, listen to the songs you're gonna have a lot of fun with this I do try to answer comments uh, when people comment. I can't do all of them, but I try to do as many of them as I can because I'm here for you guys and I want to help you, but um, I just want you to always remember before I go that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.